All right, boys and girls, welcome back to the channel. Let's go ahead and do a little bit of towing with the Cybertruck. We got an hour and 10 minute drive. I'm close to 100% charge. And how is the Cybertruck gonna do towing my 3,000 pound trailer over there? Let's find out. So we have the trailer hitch all hooked up, if you can kind of see it there. Let's go ahead and hook it up for the first part of this video to the Cybertruck. How easy is it gonna be? How difficult is it gonna be? This isn't my first time doing it, but this is my first time showing you guys on camera. I usually I'm a lot better at this, but keep in mind I'm using one hand to do this, which I totally can because I've been towing for about almost 15 years now. And the thing about Cybertruck and hooking up the hitch to the receiver is that you have to be exact. Like with my old Silverado back there that you can see, you can go a little bit just like right there and essentially it would, you could drop it forward and it would drop forward and it'd be fine. But essentially with this, you have to be dead even or it's not gonna hook up. That's just how, that's just how the setup is on Cybertruck. So I do believe I twirled this a little bit too high. So. All right, let's put the parking brake, that should be good. It's got your typical outlets for your brake lights, hooking up your change. I charge it up to 100%. Essentially, it's more like 99.5. The calculator still said there was like, maybe like, I don't know, like 10% left with it. So, um, excuse me, 10 minutes left. So let's go ahead and start our journey with Cybertruck. Again, this isn't my first time towing with Cybertruck. Um, Essentially, I am on chill mode. I am running the most efficient settings. I'm gonna be driving the speed limit. Um, I usually drive 65, 60 on the highway. So the computer is probably going to estimate that I'm gonna drive the speed limit. Um, but I just tow like that in general. I know some of you might say, who's a Tesla fanboy? He's a Tesla fanboy. Has nothing to do with fanboyism, guys. It has to do with me just being safe towing 3,000 pounds. So just a quick update, just to give you guys the watt hours per mile. We haven't gone over 50 miles an hour yet because I'm just about to merge onto the highway in about a mile. So we're at 752 watt hours per mile. And essentially we went from 48% to 51% the computer estimating by the time we get there. So just a quick update for you guys of what the computer is telling me. As soon as I get on the highway and I start traveling for a mile or two and the computer adjusts based on how I'm driving and obviously I'm not gonna be driving like my plaid. It's just, you know, working, carrying equipment, gotta be careful and the best efficiency possible. And I'll let you guys know how that is. All right, boys and girls, we're merging on the freeway. I'm gonna full send it with the trailer. I'm just kidding but I am gonna give it a little bit of juice so you guys can see how easy it is towing with this damn thing, especially going uphill. So just a little bit of pull. Oh no, my hitch, I'm just kidding. But yeah, I mean, we're already almost up to the speed limit. Let me put on my turn signal. You can see there's not many people. So let's see how she does. We're already up to speed, 70. Cool. So I just came up to 70. Um, I'm gonna bring it down to 65. I think I should be able to use the, yep, basic, just keeping the speed limit. What do they call it, cruise control? I haven't used that in years, but now we're at 65. The watt hours per mile has increased to about 835 and slowly climbing. Still sitting at 52% uh, arrival at our destination. So still pretty cool. Uh, the watt hours per mile still climbing. 877, 800, oh, we're approaching 900 now, wow. I wonder if we can keep it under 1,000, that would be great. But I think the wind is just messing with us. Um, lots of looks from people driving by. So it's come down 875, uh, 874, it's slowly calming down. I think it's kind of adjusting based on the speed we're driving. So let's find out how it's going to handle and before I let you guys go, 
hopefully we could get some reactions from people. Everybody on the highway just looks at us. Lots of smiles, lots of thumbs up. Truck guys are confused of what's going on, so yeah. There's that. All right, boys and girls, we're two minutes away from our destination and we use 925 watt hours per mile, 64 kilowatts of the battery and just about 70 to 72 because we have a couple miles left and the computer's estimating we're gonna get there 45%. Use a little bit under half of the battery and the next part of this video is going to show you that I'm gonna stop and supercharge just to be safe, but I can make it home no problem. But I just wanna show you guys the experience of what it's like at certain superchargers, because there's one about 10 minutes from here. And I believe it's a V2, not a V3, so charge slower, but that you don't need to go ahead and charge all the way to 100% to keep this thing going. So I will see you in the next part of the video. All right, boys and girls, it's currently 11.20 at night. The event is over. And we've dropped down from, if I remember correctly, we're at 44% when we actually got to our destination. We went down to 40%. So there's a little bit of phantom drain going on. Um, just so you guys can see, we have about a 22 minute drive to the supercharger. Feet, and of course, Tesla guiding the way. And uh, we're gonna see how the truck does. If you get there with 32% right now. And we should be, uh, we should be good. And we're gonna supercharge a little bit, not fully, but we're gonna handle it. And, oh yeah, baby, here we go. What the truck was made for. Tilling on a dirt road. Taking it down a dirt road. Cyber truck, baby, made in USA. Anyways, I digress. We're gonna see how it does. Probably juice it up to 50, 60% just to get it home. And then I can just charge it home overnight and we'll be all set. And again, this is kind of an extreme situation um, for, most people, but we'll see how it handles and how fast it charges, because I believe this is a level two charger. All right, everybody, we're at the supercharger. We're here. Unfortunately, you can see it's a level one supercharger. 25 minutes to get to 65% to continue. I think that's gonna be enough to get home. And unfortunately, this is the problem with some of the older supercharger locations. Let me just get out of this tight squeeze here. This is all the extra stuff that they need. You can see it's kind of like inconvenient, right? You have this whole area here, this mire, which is like, you know, a Walmart in Michigan. We have Walmarts too. And you can see there's nobody here. The supercharger and the map told me that there's nobody coming here and I'm blocking all these spaces. Now, if someone needs to supercharge, okay, cool. They can just come on this side and it's not gonna be as bad, but it's really inconvenient. Now, what I could have done now that I think about it is just pulled up like right here and I would have to come like right on top of here with the wheel, just so this could reach like right here. And now that I think about it, I would have been fine. Obviously it's like close to midnight and I don't think anybody's gonna complain. They can just charge on this side because out here in Swartz Creek, Michigan, where I'm at, there's not many people that have Teslas, maybe people just passing through because there is an expressway over there going east and west. Not a huge deal, but again, still annoying. They could have like, you know, updated the supercharger, took this one out, put it here, made these like a pass through if people need, or just like put that one on the opposite side, just to update it. This would cost them nothing, but it just depends how they ran the cables underneath. Again, super cheap for Tesla. But again, we're here. I think it was like maybe 22 minutes, extra 10, 12 miles. So I'm gonna go inside that mire here, get me a refreshment. By the time I get out, probably be halfway done and we should be all set. So yeah, and we'll see how it does going back home. And also I can see on this side, I mean, even with this, they don't even need to like do what they did over there. Exactly what I said, just cut right here, take this shit out and just pull it in and maybe upgrade the superchargers to level two and have the longer ones that are on level three, level four. Um, the cables that is, sorry, it was a long night. So <laughs> I'm partially talking in riddles, but yeah, let's see how the truck does going back home. All right, boys and girls, the supercharging is complete. We are up to 65%. Let's take this bad boy out so we don't get ideal fees. And for those of you that don't know, yes, you can get ideal fees for sitting at the supercharger when it's done. It makes sense because you're wasting people's time and resources. So we're back up to 65%. You click on here, you get 204 miles. That's obviously not accurate. So let's see how the car does 
current drive. So it was a 26 minute drive, 15 miles used 980 miles. Let's see. Car is saying we're gonna get home with 25%, 57 minute drive. Let's find out. All right, boys and girls, we're, we're 2.5 miles away from home. And essentially what happened was we had the surprise of 805 watt hours per mile. 52 miles, 48 kilowatt hours use of the battery, 807 watt hours per mile. Getting home with 22 to 23%. I'm gonna go ahead and do a final slide adding in all the math from the whole video so you guys can see essentially what I got. And I'm gonna make the point right now, these numbers are with the all-terrain bigger tires. And here are the real world Cybertruck towing numbers in my situation. Temperature, which I wanted to add outside, was around 65, 70 degrees. And then it cooled off into 50 degrees at night. It was like one of the first colder days in Michigan in September. And yes, this was about a month ago that I did this. It's a lot colder in Michigan. And I will be doing another towing video here in the next month or two with the core tires, which I did mention in the last you know, bit of video before I cut to this part that I'm on the all terrain tires. Those are really big, really beefy. And from a physics perspective, had a lot more rolling resistance because that's what matters the most. But essentially, what do we have here? I started the day off with trip one, 100% state of charge at the destination. I arrived with 44%, 924 watt hours per mile, 72 miles use one hour and 13 minutes for the drive from the event to the supercharger, which is trip two, I started with 40% and arrived with 29% use 980 watt hours per mile, 15 miles to get to the supercharger at a 26 minute drive. Now keep in mind, we got to the destination 44% and we left with 40. So there was some phantom drain, me checking the sentry mode every once in a while because people are you know passing by the cyber truck since it's so new and make sure nobody's doing anything to it. But trip three, from supercharger home started with 65% because that's all I needed to make it home. Made it home with 20% battery, used 805 watt hours per mile, 59 miles, 59 minute drive. Now, roughly with all terrains, you're going to get anywhere from 120 to 150 miles of range. We're going to see the core wheel should improve that because it says on Tesla's website it increases, but also from owning Teslas that when you have lighter wheels that have the aero covers uh, and smaller rims, they tend to uh, give you better efficiency. But we are going to be tolling in a lot more colder weather, so that might kind of like equal itself out. Same trailer, same setup. So again, thanks for tuning into this video. Want to do something different and showcase my experience with a cyber truck and towing with a business. Keep in mind, it's not for everybody, right? I don't mind stopping and supercharging, you know, 20, 30 minutes if I'm on a long trip. Lots of superchargers are having pass-through chargers where I don't have to disconnect or don't have to block a bunch of superchargers like me. But still, still interesting to see the range. Maybe I'll get the range extender down the road. I'm not quite sure. But for me, it is plenty. But it isn't for everybody. I will 100% agree for that. Some people need to tow long distances and they don't want to wait 20, 30 minutes and stop as much. That's fine. I usually stay within an hour, hour 30 minutes for my business when towing. So I don't really need to tow that far. And if I do, there's superchargers everywhere built into the screen. We'll navigate you like you saw. We'll even tell you what's going on. So if 120 to 150 miles of range is enough, it's enough. That's perfect for you. And like I said, it's probably going to be closer to like 160, maybe 170 with the core wheels versus the all-terrain. But, you know, we are going to find out here in the next week or two. So, again, thank you so much for tuning into Detroit Tesla, and I will see you in the next one.